Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the slate for this evening, a very full slate, and I'm going to be doing this solo. Bobby's out today. Um, real solid uh, pitching slate, and also some, you know, really good hitting environments, some really chalky, some not, not as much. I think it's a really, really good slate to review or to preview, and probably a good slate to play. Um, so let's just get started. The other thing that I like about the slate is there are no weather concerns. So it's a kind of a pure slate. Let's take a look first at Cleveland versus Baltimore. And you have Shane Bieber starting for Baltimore, but uh, for Cleveland. And in another universe, he would be huge chalk and be the overall, you know, overwhelming best play on the slate. But the combination of there being some other great options and the fact that he's been, uh, he's been down this year um, just kind of makes him unplayable for me. Um, so I, I will say that he's going to be low owned, but I'm going to, I'm going to have probably better low owned options than him even um, to go after. So uh, I'm probably going to be off with Shane Bieber today at 9,800 and Bruce Zimmerman is not making my list at all as far as the pitching is concerned. Uh, let's take a look at the hitting aspect of this, uh, of this game, because, you know, on a slate where you're going to have Atlanta in Colorado projecting to be such a strong play and garnering such a great deal of ownership, you are going to be looking for whatever you can to differentiate. And um, Cleveland is actually showing up for me, at least early look to be a very legitimate pivot here. Um, and if not a pure pivot, maybe as a complementary stack to an Atlanta. So I guess I'm going to highlight some of these guys. Um, the, the, fir the first guy who's actually showing up, he's good, good one off. He's good uh, pretty much wherever is going to be this um, uh, Oscar Gonzalez at a flat 2K. I mean, I imagine that he's going to be one of the more popular players on the slate. Uh, it is a big slate, so I don't know how popular it can be, but he's part of the reason why this Cleveland stack is so, you know, is so logical. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend Cleveland as being, you know, one of the top, one of the top stacks given both value and given raw upside and things like that to go for. Um, other guys on Cleveland's, um, could play or obviously let's get the full list here Wait, what happened to my cleveland list yeah so jose ramirez rosario straw owen owen miller i mean all these guys are pretty good um obviously uh what's his name uh, ramirez top play um but he's 5800 so I would probably start my stacks with Ramirez and Gonzalez and then kind of move on from there. But I definitely think this is a, a good way to get right off the, you know, get off to a good start. Uh, very, very, very decent, uh, decent hitting environment here. Now, again, it's not as it used to be with um, Baltimore, the fences in and all that, but even given all that, I do think that Cleveland is a, is a good play. All right. Uh, going to Angels, Philly. Chase or Chance Silset, I'm not quite getting to him today. There's just other better options. Starting with the his opponent, um, Zach Eflin. I don't know why, but I'm um, well. I know why because of the projections. I mean, I'm I'm showing him as a very very strong play here as an SP two. Um, you have some very uh, some spend ups that you're going to want to get to, and unless you could. You want to double pay up, which is very difficult to do today. You are going to be looking for a cheap SP2, and I think Eflin's certainly one of them. Um, I only see him projecting so far a 10% ownership, and if that's the case, I'm definitely going to be into that. So um, I'm definitely going to be recommend, recommending Zach Eflin as one of the top SP2s on the slate. Um, there, there are others, but he's certainly one of them. Let's leave it at that. Let's see the hitting, if I'm getting to, again, we're just trying to make an excuse to play anybody in Atlanta, but Atlanta, 
And unfortunately, I'm not really getting to either of these angels or Philly. Let me just confirm that. Yeah. Well, maybe a little bit of Philly. That would be my. Um, I mean, they're 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 OK. Um, so I'll include them. And this is also, you know, first time Joe Girardi not being there. He just got fired yesterday. You want to believe in any narratives or anything like that? Um, probably shouldn't, <laughs> especially in baseball. But uh, just throw that out there. But I do, I do, I do actually think Philly's a very is a decent pivot. So let's talk about some of these guys. So Brian Har Bryce Harper, Kyle Schwarber, Nick Castellanos, Hoskins, uh, Rio Muto. Um, if you want something a little, you know, little cheaper, um, Nick Maton, throw him in there. So yeah, I, I think Philly is very legit here. So I think that Eflin and Philly get a little sneaky correlation there. Eflin with Philly, I think those are both uh, both sides that you want to uh, consider. Okay, uh, Arizona against Pittsburgh. You have JT Brubaker versus Merrill Kelly. Hmm. Do I want to play Merrill Kelly? Well, no, but no. Nah, okay. Uh, I don't think I want to play Merrill Kelly. I was just staring at this for a second. I, I do think that if you are playing, you know, a, some amount of lineups and you get to Merrill Kelly, I would not X him out. He's, he's showing up as a kind of an okay play. I mean, he's, I'm not going to lie. I haven't rated about 10th, but 10th is not that bad. I mean, considering he's going to be sub 10%. So I actually don't mind that. I'm not, I'm not really getting to any Brubaker. Let me see if I'm getting to any of these hitters. Um, I can't imagine, but let's just see. No, not really. So nothing from the Arizona side. Nothing from the Pittsburgh star as far as hitting goes, but I will include Merrill Kelly in my, uh, in my player. All right. So we're going to get now to the first uh, main bit of, well, say chalk, whatever, uh, you know, best plays on the slate. Um, and that's going to be Garrett Cole. So we have Detroit at New York. Um, no weather concerns today. And you have him projecting as the best overall play on the slate. You have him projecting as well at about 40% plus ownership. And with the existence of some very reasonable pivots. So do you have to play Garrett Cole? No, but he is, is projecting as the best overall play on the slate right now. Um, I currently am not getting to any uh, Rodriguez. Uh, oh, this is not Edward Rodriguez, Elvin Rodriguez, no wonder. Okay. I thought it was the other the E-Rod, other e so to speak. So let's take a look and see if the Yankees are someone that we're going to get to here. And, and yeah, I mean, I have them. Let me just re-rank these. Yeah, I have them rated like third. Um and and relatively low ownership. Again, when you're going, when you have Atlanta at Colorado, everybody's going to have relatively low ownership. And I do feel as though that the Yankees are going to be somewhat low owned today. Um, maybe not low owned, but at least moderately owned. Um, I think that when we get to it, well, why bury the lead? I think Toronto is going to be the kind of the pivot, you know, the the popular pivot. So I think the Yankees could be viewed as kind of the pivot off the pivot, maybe. Um, I don't see how, I don't see how or how. I mean, they they have a five run, five run team total. They're playing. They're at home against Detroit. I mean, you know what I mean. I can't imagine people not playing them. Um, but as we get to the Toronto game, they're going to project to be that much better. So maybe they're going to get that much more ownership. I I don't I don't I don't buy it. I I do believe the Yankees are already get owned more than I'm seeing here. So you got to watch that. But I definitely think the Yankees are certainly viable as a pivot off Atlanta and a pivot off of the pivot of Toronto. Um, and they obviously have correlation with Cole, or Cole obviously has correlation with the Yankees. And, and um, that's about it. Um, okay, 
Minnesota against Toronto, you have another really, really strong, at least as far as I'm concerned, a really strong SP2, and that would be in, in Kikuchi. I have him at, at, you know, really good value score of 38. Um, I can't get into all of that stuff, but, 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 but a value score of 38 for me for an SP2 is actually very reasonable. Um, and I have him as the top, I guess, of the SP2s. Depends on what you consider an SP2, but um, we'll get to another one later. But at 6,500, I think he's very, very reasonable here. Um, and again, if you want to play Cole and you want to play or you want to play Burns, we'll get to him later. I mean, you probably are not going to be able to play both of them together. So you, you're going to have to do something. And I think that Kikuchi is very reasonable. I think he's a little bit, I think he's pretty much the same as Eflin. Eflin. So I like both those guys. It's F and Eflin. So I definitely like uh, Kikuchi a lot here. And as I mentioned earlier, I think Toronto is, you know, the very chalky pivot off of Atlanta. And, you know, they have a 5.7 implied team total, which is why they're projecting well, which is why they look good. You know, it's why people are playing. So Springer, Vlad, Bichette, Hernandez, Guriel, um, Interestingly, the, the guys that I have rated at for raw points are the same guys that I have rated for value. So it's going to be the same guys, um, which actually, when that happens, I'll just give you a little insight into the way I, I interpret my, um, my sheets here. I consider that usually a very strong indicator when you have the same players make up the value plays as they do the... Um, the, uh, the the raw points plays. So it's Guriel Hernandez versus Springer. He's day to day, so you have to watch that. And I guess the reason why this, I mean, Guriel at twenty eight hundred is pretty. Uh, I mean, it's pretty. It borders on insulting, as some would like to say. So I think that all these prices. I mean, Guerrero at forty three hundred. I mean, all really up and down the board is kind of a joke here. So this is why Toronto is going to be extremely popular. I, they can't possibly be as popular as Atlanta, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if these guys are at least close to Atlanta um, as far as popularity goes. Anyway, um, moving on to Chicago at Tampa, you have another kind of, you have a, one of the kind of cold pivots, and that would be Shane McClanahan. Um, he's just not in the ball game. As he's not not in the ball game. He's just not as good of a play as Cole. And you're like, duh. I mean, he's he's thirteen hundred less. Uh, yeah, that's true. And he's going to be half the ownership of Cole. Yes, that's true. So the question is, is 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 that enough? You know, is having a, a 50% ownership discount enough to make up for, you know, how do you want to, how do you want to put this eight less median fantasy points, or if you want to look at my value scores, 19 less value score points. Um, is it worth that for 50% for ownership discount? My inclination is no. Um, my inclination is it's not enough of an ownership discount that I really need him to be more say 10% owned. Um, but I have no real data to support that. That's just, again, my instinct. So I mean, my instinct is that is that the discount you're getting from the clan, from Cole to McClanahan is not worth it um, and would probably stay away. I'd rather just pay up for Burns, than, and we'll get to that, uh, than McClanahan, but that's, that's my opinion. Um, Vince Velasquez, uh, no, I'm not getting to him. Just better, better options. I mean, take a look at the hitting uh, in this game. Uh, can you get to Tampa, for example? Let's see. Um, no, not really. I mean, they're, they're really not rating well for me either on raw points or as far as value goes. So, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna probably get there. So for me, this game is probably the closest thing I see to a cross off. And I do listen, I get it. I get the McClanahan pivot. I'm just not gonna, I just don't think you're getting enough to, to make that work. 
Okay, um, Seattle at Texas. Let's take a look at the pitchers here because Logan Gilbert could be interesting. Let's see. So he's 8,600. And normally I would say that this is, this is kind of a range you might want to attack because, like I said, you, you know, probably want to play one of the 10K guys. And then if, if you don't want to pay for these, if you don't want to pay all the way down for the 6,500s, this 8K range is very, very, it's, it's very limited. There's one guy who stands out, but then if you don't want to play him, you get to Logan Gilbert. And Gilbert at only 10% ownership is actually pretty appealing to me. And I'll say this, I mean, I had some luck attacking this team. I mean, this is, you know, I don't know whether Bill James coined this or whether this is an advanced fantasy labs type uh, analysis, but um, Texas is the pits. I mean, they, they, they're, they really are the worst. I mean, they, they can't hit any. Um, they, they, they've been, they've been shut down by all kinds of terrible pitchers. Um, and I've been very fortunate to, to be on the right side of those. Now you do get Corey Seager back today, which certainly helps their lineup. Um, but aside from that, I mean, they really, they really just have nothing to offer. And, and I, I would, I would probably take a shot at Gilbert at low ownership. So uh, that, that's my opinion here. Uh, projection wise, he's fair. I mean, I have him, I don't want to rank this. So I have him rated eighth, but it's close. He's pretty close to the top four. If you want to know the truth. Um, not the, not the top three, you know what I mean? To be in fourth, he's close enough. And again, from a range perspective, there's another AK guy who's going to get much higher ownership. And you want to go down to Gilbert at 11% or something like that. I think it's really reasonable. So I definitely like that. I, I, I can't imagine anybody against Texas being low owned anymore. Um, but you know, look, look, the, the bad news is Corey Seager's back. And Corey Seager, I mean, you're right against Corey Seager. You got a world of problems, but just one guy. Let, you know what? Go ahead, walk him. It's fine by me. Um, so I definitely like that. Uh, Dane Dunning on the other side, I was expecting to get to him, but just not quite. That's the best I could describe it. He's okay, but there's just a lot of better pitchers. You know, I'd much rather pay down for, for Kikuchi or Eflin or even some other guys we haven't gotten to yet, or even Merrill Kelly. I'd rather play Merrill Kelly than Dane Dunning here. Um, let's take a look at the, the stacks, see if any of these guys, if I can get to Seattle. Yeah, sure. Why not? Seattle aberrated kind of isn't okay. But the thing is that Dunning, as I mentioned, Dunning is kind of tough to get to. Um, as far as get to, uh, get to meaning it's tough to score, a, you know, a ton of runs against him. So um, I don't think I would, I would play Seattle as a five man stat. Maybe, maybe a couple of guys from here. They do rate to be okay values, um, but just, not quite going to get there, I don't think. All right, uh, moving on, uh, Houston KC. Uh, Singer against Urkuti. Um Oddly, I'm not getting to any of these pitchers at all. Um, I almost want to say that it don't even have them in my projections. No, I do. I have Urkuti here. Oh, he's only 5,900. Yeah, so I do have him as viable, but not really. I mean, I, I have other guys better. You know, I have, I have, I'd rather go to Ethel. You know, I'd rather go to Mer Kikuchi. I'd rather go to another guy later. I mean, uh, I don't think I'm going to do a Kudi at 5,900. Um, and then Brady Singer, I got burned by him the last actually I got sort of burned by myself like his, his last game his last start I just really didn't see no it wasn't no it was a couple of starts ago this is what happened you go back like three starts ago he had pitched two innings and there was no indication that he was going to pitch like a lot after this and they totally let him roll when he scored 35 fantasy points maybe he's he's here maybe he's he's legit um I have to tell you, I'm not getting to him in any of my projection models yet, and certainly not today. 7,900 is – maybe he's a pivot off of that AK guy that we still haven't talked about yet. It's Houston. 
And that's asking for, I think it's asking for trouble, but look at this. We got his last, his last start, he had eight strikeouts and no walks. And, and two starts before that, nine strikeouts, no walks. Okay. He had the Minnesota and whatever. He kind of struggled here, but boy, oh boy. I mean, he's the 90 pitches a game. Is this going to be one of those where I say screw the projections and just throw them in? I, I might. I have to say that Houston four and a half run total. No way. I mean, I, I don't know. Singer's pretty good. I don't know if Houston's good too, but I don't know. Maybe Singer, maybe Singer's viable. Um, now, with that said, uh, let's see if, if I can get to any of these Houstons as far as bats go. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, I have them rated alongside of some others, like the Angels I didn't even talk about um, as, as legit. Uh, did we even talk about the Angels yet? Yeah, against Philly. Um, I didn't really get to them. But now that I'm looking at it, maybe Angels are not that bad, <laughs> even though we like Eflin on the other side. But I have Houston a lot, you know, right alongside of the Angels. Similar play, like low ownership. Um, you know, pivot off of the Atlanta, then pivot off the pivot of Toronto. Maybe teams like the Angels and Houston just pivot off the pivot off the pivot. <laughs> so, like, if, if we're going to regard the Yankees as kind of like the pivot off of Toronto, like this kind of like pivot pyramid, right? And maybe I could, maybe I could, maybe I could turn a phrase. Maybe I could become like one of those DFS guys that, that invent something. So you have the, the pivot pyramid, you have the pivot on the top, then the pivot off the pivot. It's kind of like Pascal's triangle almost. Then pivot off the pivot, off the pivot. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Angels and Houston. Those are pivots off the Yankees who are pivots off Toronto, who's pivots off Atlanta. Anyway, um, I guess that's enough of that game. Ooh, why do I not? I can't believe this. Why is my projection on Joe Musgrove so atrocious? I don't know. <laughs> we'll get to it, I guess. Boy, oh boy. All right, so let's 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 deal with this game. Uh, first, we have Corbin Burns who is 10-1, and he is the just ultra, ultra of, as the kids either say or used to say, pivot off of Cole, right? Um, he's 10-1. He certainly has a lot of upside. And you look through his, his fantasy output, I mean, woo-wee, 40 fantasy points in his last start. But, but, He's got some, as my son likes to say, some limones in here. So he's got a couple of lemons, you know, and 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 one of them is against. Uh, I would say lemon. It's so funny, like pitch six, six innings with one earned run. I'm considering a lemon, but a 10-1, 21 fantasy points ain't great. And then the game before that against Atlanta, big big time limon. A couple of ones that are okay, and then he's got a couple of smashes, but so he's definitely got a little more volatility than, than you'd, ex, you'd expect. Right. But listen, no, but nobody accused Garrett Cole, by the way, of being ultra consistent either. Right. You go back to Garrett Cole. Well, he's over 20, literally at first start, except for this, where he came out after the first. Now, he's literally over 20, every start, regardless of how many runs he gives up. He gave up five. He gave up five runs and eight hits against Baltimore at home. And he had twenty five fantasy points. Why? He has double digit strikeouts every every start. So, um, so I do have Burns less than worse than Cole by a decent amount. So it's the same argument. Is it worth maybe getting fifty percent less ownership? Let's say that I'm right. It's forty two percent for Cole and twenty one percent or twenty three percent for Burns. Is it worth it? to give up maybe six fantasy points as a median and maybe 16 on the value score. Um, in this case, I would say probably not again. I think, I think I would just rather play Cole. I don't think, I think he's just that much better of a play uh, than birds. I just do. 
Um, but that's that's really up to you. I mean, again, I can't quantify that. I can tell you that the Colts are better play. I can tell you it's going to be higher on as for whether the 20% ownership gap is, is worth the, 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 this gap in projections. Listen, if I knew that, then, then, then I would have the, the cheat code, you know, that, and that, that, that is really what I originally got into DFS to do. And I, you know, one of these days I am going to do this to figure out just to re really reduce it to one number, you know, like, and, and I know the answer is always it's slate dependent, but what type of ownership discount is an X projection gap worth? And that answer is different in every slate. It's answer, the it answer is different in every sport. But that, you know, that decision is, is one that's made literally in every lineup that you make. And um, so it makes this fun. Anyway, um, I'm not getting to, Bur to, to Musgrove right now. As I mentioned, I don't know why. I have to read, I guess I'll relook at the projections later, but right now I just can't play him. I mean, unless these projections come up a little bit, I mean, I, I just can't do it. Um, but we'll see. I, I have a feeling they are going to change, but let's see. Look at this. Look at this team total, like six and a half. I'm mean, not team total. This game total, six and a half. Wow. For a baseball game in the summer. Uh, let's, let's take a look. Is, if this is. Is this, if, let's say, is this a, a, a game where I want to make a hero stack here? Let's see. No, I'm not really getting any Milwaukee at all or any San Diego, no matter how much I try. So I'm not going to be getting to that. I don't think. Milwaukee, let me see. Milwaukee. No. San Diego. No. So for me, it would be, I, I'm probably going to end up crossing off. Um, probably end up fading Burns. Uh, if if I don't play Cole, it's going to be I because I probably double pay down for pitchers. I think that's going to be my take. I guess is to just fade the fade the obvious Cole pivots, meaning fade Burns, fade Bieber, fade fade fade, fade McClanahan. Um, and then if I don't play Cole, then maybe something like a Gilbert. We'll, we'll get to, and we'll get to the other eight Ks and other stuff in a minute. Speaking of which. All right, so here I think is a very, very interesting uh, spot for pitchers. First of all is uh, Ivaldi. I, this is the guy I've been, been kind of alluding to as being a really, really strong looking uh, mid-range SP2. Uh, I have Ivaldi as second best overall value score on the slate as far as pitchers go. And there's a decent enough gap between him and the other guys that, that it, it takes, it makes me take note. And as a result, maybe not as a result, but as it kind of goes, he's, I have him also rated as the second highest owned pitcher. Um, I have him at 25, 26% ownership. I personally don't think that's going to hold. Um, I don't think that he's going to be that highly owned. I just think there are way too many options for someone like that to be 25%. Um, and if he is 25% owned, I may just play other guys, you know, and, and take a different type of construction than going, say, Cole Eovaldi, which I guess is going to be the chalk, right? If, if, the, if these ownership projections are right, I mean, people are going to go Cole Eovaldi and then get in whatever. Um, so if that's the case, this is where I would go to something like Gilbert over Eovaldi or pay down for something like Gucci or Eflin, something like that. The, the other part of this game is, is going to be the real own piece, and that's going to be the Caprillion side. Um, look, proceed at your own risk because the guy never has any – never never can even get out of the innings. I mean, like, the guy's terrible, it seems, but he's, he is projecting to be, you know, a 3 xer type, you know, at, at, at 5% ownership. So if you get to this in some of your builds – uh, like if you if you need, let's just say that you want to just jam in these Atlantas or something, and you just you need a fifty, you know, sub six k. I think he's totally reasonable. Um, I'm not gonna prioritize him, but I'm not gonna dispute the projection to some degree, right? Um, I don't have him that much worse than honestly than 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 Kikuchi or Eflin. Um, Maybe that's something to do is just kind of shuffle these three. 
um, and see what happens. Um, again, this is this is asking for trouble probably, but that's just where I'm getting right now. Oh, I skipped the Atlantic game. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so let's go back to it. So I guess the first thing I want to talk about is, well, there's, there, there's two things. First of all, you have Max Fried, who is extremely good. He's a really good, a good pitcher, but he's going to get a terrible projection because that Colorado makes sense. Let me just say that, that Colorado has been held relatively in check uh, at home in the last couple of games. They might just be terrible. Um, but I'm not going to play Max Freed at that price um, uh, in this spot. It's just not going to happen. The other thing I would say um, regarding um, Atlanta is this. Um, first of all, they do project to be the highest rated stack by a, by a ton, both at raw and value, actually. But just, you know, sample size, all of this. But I've got one, two, three. Wait, how many games do I have? I have one, two. I got three home games for Chad Cool since he came over here. Three of them against, at, home against, against, uh, at home for Colorado since he came over from Pittsburgh. You'll notice the Pittsburgh guy. Game one, 23 fantasy points, giving up no runs to the Phillies in six innings. Which, of course, Philly was huge job. April 30th, um, seven and a third, getting the win, giving up three runs to the Phillies, 20 fantasy points. They priced him at 7,900, so nobody played him. Obviously, why would you? But mowing them down pretty much then home against san francisco gave up uh six runs on eight hits so we have three games two smashes and one get the slaughter um is it possible he's not that bad at colorado sure is it possible that Atlanta is not going to score a billion runs three games in a row or whatever. Yeah, it's possible. Um, I'm looking for any excuse at low ownership to fade these guys <laughs> um, because they do look like an extremely strong play. I will just say this, that if you are going to play Atlanta, don't play Cole. And, and you know what? Don't play Burns. Don't play McClanahan. Don't play any of those pitchers that are above 20 percent do some double punt thing like uh you know with some of the pitchers the other pitchers i've described play logan gilbert you know just don't 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 play chalk with chalk it's just it's just bad it's just bad form it's bad vibe it's bad mojo it's bad dfs all right um i guess that's all i have oh wait i may as well check to see if colorado is showing up I can't imagine playing anybody against Max Freed, regardless of where they're playing. So I don't imagine so, um, especially a team that hasn't gotten a hit. It's the Eisenhower administration. Actually, that's not true. They put up some runs last night. Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you. Now that I now that I trashed them a little bit, I could get them in. I mean, that's really asking for it. But I don't have them that much worse than say to Cleveland. Now, now that now that I mention it, so hell, I mean, it looks against like Max Fried, but whatever. Yeah, maybe they are that much worse than Cleveland. No, I don't know. I'm just kind of staring at this. Yeah, so I, I am gonna, I am going to include Colorado. I'm going to include Colorado's player. But playing against Max Fried is not is not is not good form, but um, I I think it's worth it. And the last game on the board, you have Tyler Anderson against Chris Bassett. Um, Dodgers against the Mets. Who won the game last night? Um, this is how bad this is. This is what happens to you when you play DFS. You don't even 
know what happened. Oh wow, they 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 we won they won two nothing. So Gonsolin didn't have I hope I imagine Gonsolin had a good game, right? I presume. Um it's funny because I had Gonsolin, but I was dead in something else, so I forgot forgot to look. I wonder how he ended up doing. I guess we can check. Anyway, um I'm not getting to either of these pitchers right now, Tyler Anderson or Bassett. So that's probably going to be a pass. And let me take a look at the Dodgers specifically. I, I imagine that's who I would get to in the spot. But maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, I do have the Dodgers as kind of alongside of Houston. It's kind of like a pivot off the pivot off the pivot, right? So again, the you know, the 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 the, the, the pivot pyramid. You have Atlanta, then you have the Toronto, then you have the Yankees, and then you have Angels, Houston, and the Dodgers. Um, so yeah, I think Colorado, I think, I think the Dodgers are always playable, um, especially against the righty and you get them at low ownership. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I would definitely take a shot at that. So that was, uh, one of my longer previews, I guess. Um, but I guess to summarize, if the slate were locking now, I have a feeling I would end up, I would end up double punting pitching just because Atlanta is such a strong play and and, and, and the, the other plays that I would want involve expensive players you know except for Toronto like if I was going to play the Dodgers or something like that or Houston something like that or what were the other some of these pivots the, the, the Angels right against Eflin maybe you know I'd want to double punt because I need to be able to afford them. Like, I don't want to, att- I don't want to go after the Atlanta stacks with, with I don't want to bring uh, what's, what's the term. I don't want to bring a, you know, a knife to a gunfight. I want, I want to bring some, 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 some hitters to that stack. You know, I don't want to say, Oh, I'm going to fade Atlanta by playing, you know, cheapos from the tigers. You know, I, I, I want to fade Atlanta by playing overpriced guys with upside, you know, um Yankees like ju- like Aaron Judge types you know even even the Houston types like Alvarez and Altuve or or, or um um Dodgers like well, Mookie, Mookie Betts and all these guys um and to get to those guys you're gonna prop to pay down for pitching so some some variation without Cole might be the prescription for GPPs but you will see um i will try to be there at six this evening if not i will let you guys know and uh that'll do it good luck everybody